This tutorial is going to cover the program window. In other words, the very first thing that you see when you open up Pyware for the first time. It consists of a few different areas and we're going to go through each one of them. Your program window may not look exactly like this. There might be some slight differences. For example, your real view may not have loaded up depending on your computer settings or it will definitely not look like mine since I have it custom set. Your toolbar may not be vertical, but might be horizontal like this. That can be changed by clicking in this little gray area. Uh, and there may be some other small changes, but for the most part, it should look, th this is the basic layout here. So let's go through the elements one by one, and they will all be covered in depth in future tutorials. But for now, it's just a sort of orientation session. The first thing is the field grid. That's right here, the football field, the, where you're going to be putting in most of your work. This is where you're going to be entering spots. This is where you're going to be entering transitions, designing forms and big picture items. All that stuff is going to happen right here. In fact, there are a lot of drill designers that never even use the real view window here. They do all of their work here and they kind of picture it in their mind's eyes and their drill is awesome. They never even have to use the animation. So I want to impress upon you that getting familiar with every aspect of the field grid is going to be important. Now, my field grid may not look the same as yours. In fact, your field grid might look a little bit more like that. And that can be changed in this area right here. Up here, we have the field display toolbar. The field display toolbar has a few different options. One of them you just saw in which I can select my own custom grid, but there are other grids out there that you can choose. Uh, this is my NCAA grid. There are true NCAA grids that are slightly different. You'll see if I select that slightly different in regards to the hashes and the way that the numbers are laid out. You also can change this into an arena football field grid. So there's a lot of things that you can do here, depending on where you are writing the drill for. But most of us are going to be writing drill for either high school or college fields. And so I'm just going to go back to my high school grid here. So that's one of the aspects of the field um, display toolbar. You can also change the handle bar size here. That You don't see any handlebars right now because I haven't put in any spots, but just know that this is where I can change their size. Plus, you can turn off and on certain elements here. We'll go into more detail with these in a later tutorial. But just know all of these things are here, and it's worth hovering over them just to know what they are. And then we can go into what they do later on. Next up, and probably most important, is the tool palette. The tool palette is this guy right here. It's going to be either vertical or horizontal. Some people like it horizontal. I personally like it vertical and off to the side here because then that gives me more of the field to work with without something being in my way. The main toolbar has all of the elements that you're going to need to create drill. And we'll come back to that obviously at some other point in time when we can go into it uh, in a little bit more detail. Next is the real view window. And like I said, it might look different for you. It might be smaller, might be larger. It might not even be present at all, depending on how fast your computer is. On some computers, it's turned off because the, the visuals would burn out your chip, basically. Uh, there are also different ways of customizing it so that it's not as realistic looking and maybe then takes a little bit less power. Uh, we can go into detail about that a little bit later. And uh, you can control the size of this window. For example, I usually have it this large, but then hidden into this toolbar. I double click up at the toolbar right up here. And when you do that, it just hides. And so it sits there and I can design something and then go take a look at it whenever I feel like. But I don't have to have it running the entire time. Some people like that. Some people like designing the drill and having this kind of hovering up here so they can kind of see it out of the corner of their eye while they're designing. And some people actually throw this thing, sorry, throw this thing onto a separate monitor, which you can do. Uh, whichever version of that you decide to use, it's up to you. I, I like just having it out of the way while I'm designing and then I only open it up when I want to take a look at something in a little bit more detail. 
Next we have the console. The console is this guy right here. It usually lives right around here, but as you can see, it's movable. You can move it around to wherever you need to. It cannot be made vertical, however, it is just horizontal. The console will have things like telling you where your icon is at any given time. As you can see right in here, it's going to change as I move it around. And once we have positions, you'll note that it tells you how many positions there are total and how many you have selected as well as whatever editing count you are on. The console also has a secondary tab and this really deals with all the labels. So for example, let's say you have a line of saxophones and there are X1, X2, X3, X4. This is going to deal with the placement of the one, two, three, and four. And we'll go into more detail with that at some later point. Next up is the count track, and the count track is this guy down here. This is what lets you see what your band is doing, or core, or whoever you're writing drill for. It lets you see what they're doing at any given count. So if you want to know what they're doing at count 28, well, there you go. I can see what's happening at count 28. I can see what's happening between counts 0 and 40. I can see what's happening between counts 24 and 40. I can move these around as much as I want. And it also has the playback controls, which will be a little bit more important once we start putting stuff out on the field. But they basically allow us to play the animation of the transitions between set and set. So this count track here is going to be super important. Also, this is where you add page tabs. There's a tutorial about page tabs coming. But basically, this is where we are able to put in the, the pages, the sets themselves, because we need to know, hey, this is an eight count move, this is an eight count move, this is an eight count move. So this is where that will come into play, and this is how we can print out drill charts later, because it's going to pull them off of page one, two, three, four, etc. The only thing left to talk about really are these drop down menus. And the drop down menus, unlike many other programs that don't have a lot of useful drop down stuff, uh, Pyware does. It's got a couple of important things in here. First off, all your document, uh, document and application options are in here. You've got sketch library. You've got the ability to adjust to the grid. So if, let's say you've put a block together and it's not quite on the grid. This can adjust it to um, whatever you need it to adjust to. And the same thing with snap to over there and swap two positions comes in very handy when you realize you've made a mistake and you need to swap two people um, from either one set to another set or from one set to the beginning of the drill or from one set to the end of the drill. All that stuff is in here. All these things are super important and can be used to help you, especially under utilities with the count editor and the grid designer and the production sheet and all of these things will come in very handy the more you explore them, and we'll do that in a later tutorial. And that is essentially all of the initial components of the Pyware program window. If you have any questions about any other area that I haven't covered and that I've somehow overlooked, please feel free to shoot me an email if you are able to find my contact information. And I will be happy to either update this tutorial or make a new one where we can talk about some of these other areas that need help.